What's going on guys? After about a one month long work assignment at different client sites in Atlanta, Georgia, as well as Los Angeles, California, I'm finally back to my home base in Montreal, Canada. Now, some of you know, I make quite a few videos on technical subjects which relate to industrial automation on my YouTube channel for Solus PLC. And I just wanted to share some of the equipment that I had the pleasure to essentially purchase during my trip and I had them shipped to LA because for whatever reason, shipping from Toronto to LA is cheaper than shipping some of that equipment from Toronto to Montreal, but that's a whole other subject. So I have quite a few pieces of gear here and I'm gonna be going through them one by one just to kind of share some of the parts, like I said. So first of all, it's gonna be the PowerFlex drives. So I talked about these drives a couple of times on my uh, LinkedIn as well as YouTube channel. The PowerFlex 525, very, very useful drive. I've used quite a few of these in different plants and client sites and everybody absolutely loves them. So I just wanted to get some more hands-on time and be able to figure out some of the more advanced features. And I got two of these. One of them is a three phase and one of them is a single phase. As you can probably imagine, it's really difficult to get three phase power in your house. Of course, you can use a converter, a transformer, all kinds of good stuff, but it's just easier to practice on a single phase drive. With that same drive, I got a three phase motor. So the single phase drive still outputs a three phase um, output. And I got this Oriental motor, which is very easy to play with. I already wired it in, tested, so everything is working as expected. Next, we've got another device, which I've also talked about on the uh, LinkedIn page, as well as YouTube, so Point .io. I got a couple of different cards, so basic digital inputs and outputs, but I'm planning to get some of the analog modules, which are a lot more expensive on eBay than you might think. So very easy to work with, very useful in the field, but there are a few features that I wanna test. I wanna test some different configurations and just use it for some of the stuff I have at home. Next, we have a networking device. So you'll see behind me, I have this, Stratix 5700 series. I ended up buying a Stratix 8000. I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know yet what the different features are. This is the lower end model, so it doesn't have any of the NAT. I don't believe it does any layer three translation, so there's no routing involved, but I think it can still manage different VLANs. So I'm gonna be kind of exploring this a little bit and it's much cheaper than the 5700. So maybe that's just a better option depending on some of the applications, you maybe don't need a uh, fully managed switch. So I'm going to be looking at the switch as well and kind of discussing some of the different features as I move forward with it. A very cool purchase that I was trying to make for quite some time, but I couldn't find the right price is going to be this MPL motor. So these uh, servo motors are quite expensive from Rockwell directly. And even on eBay, if you try to find one of these, it can be up to $1,000. So it's a very small motor, but it's still really good to practice some of the motion applications, which, which I believe are the most complex thing that you can get into as far as control systems go. So just want to practice some, you know, motion commands at home and be able to uh, kind of work with some of the newer drives. I have experience with the Kinetics 6000 series, but some of the ethernet stuff, which is going to be this Kinetics 350 is somewhat new to me. And I've already played with it last night, but it's been, uh, it's been a challenge because of course, SIP motion is a little bit different than uh, what you had with the Kinetics that go over uh, the Circos nodes. And one of my biggest pet peeves, I'm actually going to show you this um, live is essentially the changes that sometimes Rockwell makes, which may seem uh, insignificant, but they do have quite a bit of an impact on customers. So these are the two leads which I bought on eBay as well that go from the Kinetics 350 that go to this motor. And one thing that you will not notice immediately is that these leads are actually of a different type. So the motor, you'll notice that there's going to be threads on the ends, both for the power as well as the feedback from the motor. That being said, this cable is essentially of a different type. It's just a quick connect. There's a, it's essentially a speed, speed tech, uh, which allows you to quickly connect the motor and just twist it by, I believe it's 90 degrees and you're connected, which is nice in practice. But what that really created is that some of the older motors that a lot of the customers had now became quote unquote obsolete because the cable part number no longer matches the motor. So since Rockwell kind of discontinued this threaded um, device or setup, 
it's very difficult for them, first of all, to get these motors. So now they essentially have to replace the entire infrastructure. They either have to replace the cables or they have to replace the motors, which becomes really costly. And really, it's the same exact cable. The only thing that changed is this little piece here. And what I had to do at home last night is actually use a Dremel. And you'll notice, so typically this, this cable connector comes with little tabs which kind of go into the connector that is designed for this but since i have threads on my motor i had to dremel those out and be able to connect now the cable at this point is just hanging essentially by the by the pins on the terminals which is fine for a home application but like i said it causes some confusion and just unneeded expenditure when it comes to clients so those were the modules that i purchased so i'm looking forward to making some content like i said some of you already know that I have a separate YouTube channel for some automation stuff if you want to check that out. If not, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, make sure to post them or send me a direct message. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.